Don't go out and buy a set of bagpipes if you want to start learning the bagpipes. All you need to start is a practice chanter. That's all you need. And you can get a practice chanter really cheap for, you know, 50, 50 to a hundred dollars uh, US or, or even Canadian dollars. Uh, so don't get out in a fuss. You know, I've talked to too many people who are in a fuss about Oh, now I got to spend thousands of dollars just to get a set of bagpipes. No, uh, that'll stop anybody from practicing. I've even uh, heard of people starting on a pencil just to learn the fingering. Um, but really, if you can get yourself a practice chanter, which I'll talk about in this video, um, you know, there's lots of great options out there. And I'm going to actually read to you the comments from my free Facebook group, um, which you're more than welcome to join and share in the wisdom and the posts of that Facebook group. And uh, this was a post I put in the Facebook group. What, pa what practice chanter would you recommend for a beginner? And I'm going to read those comments, something like 69 comments. Maybe I won't read all 69, but I'll, I'll give you some, just some real brand names of different practice chanters you can buy. So you don't have to buy a $1,000, $2,000 set of bagpipes just to start playing. Usually you're on the practice chanter uh, for, you know, anywhere from a couple months up to six months. So if you've been playing the practice chanter consistently for six months and you, you're you nowhere near buying a set of pipes, probably you need to bite the bullet and buy a set of pipes at that point. But you have a six months leeway of, uh, of, of just get the chanter. It's only a $50 investment, maybe $100. Anything fancier than that is just, uh, you know, fancy carved engravings and stuff, stuff like that. Like fancier than this, this is just, I don't know, fake copper or something, but like silver engraved, you don't need that just to start out. That's like a two to $300 chanter. You don't need that. You just need a 50 to $100 one. What about Alec? What about, I can, why pay a hundred bucks for just a chanter? I can buy a whole set of pipes for a hundred dollars. Why don't I just start with that? Again, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I, my recommendations I'll read from my Facebook comments, that free Facebook group, which you can join in the link below. I wouldn't recommend the bagpipes for $100 or less or $200 or less that you can buy on Amazon. Really, if you're going out and buying a set of pipes, you should have already been playing the practice chanter for at least two months, if not six months. Now go out and buy a set of pipes. And when you buy a set of pipes, make sure you're buying a set of pipes that's made in uh, the UK, North America, or Australia. And uh, you want a set of pipes that's a good quality I, you know, I, I've tried the bad quality instrument thing. It's no fun. It kills your, kills your playing. So frustrating. Um, for a few years, I was in a symphony playing trumpet. I had this cheap trumpet that I got from like a friend of a friend and, and it was horrible. It practicing was a bear. People had to listen to me, which was even worse. And you know, it wasn't until I bit the bullet and I went out and I bought a used but a uh, professional level trumpet. And it just, it just made a world of difference. The trumpet became fun. It became enjoyable to practice. People were saying how good I was when I hadn't really changed anything. I just got a better quality instrument. So sometimes you get what you pay for. But in this video, we're talking about practice chanters. So I'm going to talk about different kinds of practice chanters and what all, you know, I have, I have an RG Hardy vintage. <laughs> It was uh, my grandpa's and my dad's and older brother. My older brother played for a long time. He got a new one and I inherited it. So that's what I play. It's a short. Some chanters are longs. So I got too many chanters here. Some chanters are longs. So this is a short one from the mouthpiece to here. That's a long one. So you can see Wah. different size. The short and the long. People get in a fuss about the short and the long doesn't really matter in terms of the finger width is all the same. This one just doesn't have a blowpipe on, but that finger width is all the same. There's just a lot of extra chanter here. Some people like it because they can hold that on their knee as they play or on the table as they play quite easily while they play so it's nice and steady. Some people like it because it's, it's the same size as a pipe chanter. So sometimes, you know, if it's designed right, it can go right into your, right into your big set of pipes too. So that's kind of cool. Uh, with the long chanter and uh, and some people just think well it still gets me used to used to that long chanter when I get to the big pipes but really that short chanter it's the same fingering so at the end of the day it's the same fingering doesn't matter and then the other chanter I have oh and you might be wondering oh 
why does that one look different? So a chanter, you know, a, a mouth blown chanter has three parts. It has the top part, the bottom part, they go together, there'll be some hemp lined up so that top part can go on the bottom part. And then the third part, <laughs> top part, bottom part, the third part's the reed. I've had questions, oh, I got just a cheap plastic reed. Should I order a wooden reed? No, not for your practice chanter. That's all I have is just these little plastic reeds. I'm not going to get into all the different kinds of reeds, but it's just a, just a plastic reed. Some are white. Some are red. So really, I just experiment. It, do I like the sound of the chanter? If I don't, or it seems too noisy or too hard to blow, put a little dental elastic around there and you can adjust that dental elastic up or down uh, to your liking. So that's a trick I've done in the past. So that's the part. So let's get to the Facebook, Facebook comments. And I'm, I'm not gonna read names because I didn't get permission of everybody to share names. I'm sure first names would be fine, but still, I'll, I'll not say any names. But, you know, this at the time of this video, the free Get Bagpipe Ready Facebook group, the link below is to join if you're interested. At the time of this video, we have 1,700 members. Uh, this post, I, I posted the question, what practice chanter would you recommend? Um, it's got four, 49, I think I said 69 before, so my apologies, 49 comments. Um, so. So I, you know, I posted a, a link I had found. It's called the 10 best practice chanters for sale um, in 2021. So I'd posted that link in the comments. So there's there's that resource. And then I just want to tell you some of the names of uh, some, you know, different chanters work for different people. And you, the important thing is you just need to get one in your hands and start going on it. And if it's a chanter for like $20 or less, I'd be skeptical of the quality. If it's $50, $200, then you know you're, you're in the right ballpark and you're getting what you need. So uh, first person says RG Hardy Twist Trap. So, so that's the same brand as this one, RG Hardy, but it, a newer version. And the Twist Trap is kind of cool. It's got a, a little kind of, a, I don't even know how to explain it, a little vessel or container in here that collects some of that moisture because there's some of the moisture or saliva spit accumulates in there and and you just have to dump it out and take it apart to dry it. Um, but but the, the twist trap will, will help collect that moisture. So that's kind of a cool cool thing. I have heard good things about the RG Hardy twist trap. Um, another person commented that's what they got as well. Um, and for them, the twist trap, they, they, they weren't sure if it really made much of a difference, but they liked the chanter. Dunbar regular length. So a Dunbar, is a, a second one. So we've got RG Hardy, we've got Dunbar, um, and then there's some talk on different reeds, which I didn't want to get into too much, but different brands of reeds for the practice chanter, uh, Warnock, Abbott, Gibson, Walsh, so Nail, Shepherd, lots of different reeds there. Okay, so, um, oh, oh, the Nail and the Shepherd are chanters. So we have chanters, we have Dunbar, we have RG Hardy, we have Nail, N-A-I-L-L, -L, and that's actually the same chanter. I have a nail chanter for my Highland bagpipes that I play, not my practice chanter, but so they, they make excellent chanters. Shepherd, Shepherd is another one. Um, McCallum is another one you might have seen. I wear a McCallum shirt, <laughs> not sponsored by <laughs> McCallum bagpipes. Uh, they, they have no idea I exist. Uh, so McCallum, more McCallums, more Dunbars, some, oh, I like the long, uh, Polly McCallum long. So Polly is more the plastic chanter, whereas, you know, some are made out of wood. Again, that'll change the price budget. Um, really the Polly ones are just, just fine. Like it, it's just a practice chanter. It's just to get you on the, on the big set of pipes. So no worries there. Yeah. Uh, so that, that at least gets you through a few. Duncan McRae, one I'm not as familiar with, but, but this person posted a picture of their chanter and they really like it. A nail, long chanter, maverick practice chanter. So, lo I mean, lots of brand names out there. So, so and, and brand names in a, in a good way. RG Hardy, Maverick, Walsh, Walsh. Yeah, there's a few people recommending Walsh. So, you know, if, if, this, is, if this is where you're stuck, if this video is hitting home, um, and you're like, I don't, I want to get started, but I don't even 
know how I'm going to afford a set of bagpipes. Or I want to get started, but I don't even know what I need to get started. So what you need to get started is a practice chanter. You don't want one too expensive. It shouldn't be in the two to three hundred dollar range, but it shouldn't be too cheap. It shouldn't be in the twenty to thirty dollar range either. So keep in mind some of those brand names I mentioned: Dunbar, Maverick, McCallum, uh, Shepard, uh, R.G. Hardy, Walsh. Like so, it, any of those would be great. There's other options out there too. I'm missing. I'm sure I just went through the first few comments of that those forty nine comments in the free Facebook group, which you can check out below. Um, it can be short, it can be long, not a, not a big deal. If it's kind of tough to play initially or sounds really loud, try the elastic trick on the reed. And then one last thing to chat about is, do you go electric? So this one I actually plug my earphones into and it's, it has a battery and, and it, it makes no sound other than what's going in my earbuds. Do you go electric or do you go mouth blowing? So that's, that's the other question. Um, so I'd say if you can only afford one chanter, for sure go mouth blown. Don't even worry about the electric one. Um, just go mouth blown. If you can afford two chanters, or maybe you start with the mouth blown and now you're hooked, then you could look at getting an electric chanter as a supplement. Um, the reason why we don't want to do the electric chanter without the mouth blown chanter is you're not working on your lip muscles, you're not working on your embouchure, and if your end goal is to get playing the, the Highland bagpipes, you need some lip muscles. You need to work on your embouchure, your, your musical muscles here in your, in your lips and your face. So you wanna be working on the mouth blown one. That being said, practicing is better than no practicing at all. So for special situations where you're in tight quarters with family, friends, uh, comrades, whatever the case may be, and they're not bagpipe enthusiasts, <laughs> the electric chanter can be a great option, but I still, wouldn't want to replace the mouth blown one but if it allows you to practice even more yeah and you can afford that second one get the electric one and i i i've done a video before on that i have the dagger dagger pipes too is what i have um there i won't get it but there is different electric chanter options out there again some are like crazy expensive like the blair chanter oh very nice i've never played one, but I've heard lots of great things and seen lots of good posts about, it. but it's super expensive. I wouldn't buy that as a, as a beginner. If you're, if you're short on change, right? If you're short on money, save that big money for your set of Highland bagpipes. If that's the end goal, um, don't get the crazy fancy chanter. If, if money is an issue, okay, that could be an option. But if you're, if you're tight on funds, just a normal mouth blown practice chanter of any of those names I mentioned, will be in that 50 to $100 range. And uh, if you want more support for helping you get started on the bagpipes, I encourage you to join the free Facebook group. We're 1,700 members strong at the start of this video. And it's just amazing to see all these, all these awesome pipers, uh, beginner pipers, intermediate pipers, experienced pipers, other, other teachers, bagpipe teachers in the group. And they're, they're just all helping each other out. And it's amazing even as a beginner, how much help you can be by just sharing, oh, this is what has worked for me, or oh, this is what was suggested to me, or oh, this is what I tried and didn't work for me. So, you know, it's it's helpful to somebody else in the group, let alone all the all the different experienced pipers in there as well, helping out beginners. It's really a wonderful, a wonderful thing to see. So click on the link below, join the Facebook group if you have more questions. If not, grab that pencil, work on the fingering with my videos, or Get yourself a practice chanter, not a $20 one, not a $200 one, just a $50, $200 one. Don't worry about that cheap set of bagpipes. Don't worry about that expensive set of bagpipes. Just get that practice chanter. And I'll see you in the next video and we'll keep on piping on.